Hey Canucks fans, thanks for being here. A pleasant good evening to you and you'll know why I'm saying that in about two or three minutes. I am thrilled you are here tonight as part of my weekly live stream. I am Canuck Clay and this is my Canucks take, all in one take. Indeed, it is my weekly live stream Wednesday night and we are here with a very special guest. So before we bring him on, and we're gonna get to him right away. I'm not gonna do a elongated intro tonight. I wanna thank you guys for being here. Moderators, I wanna thank you in advance. You know what we always say, if a comment is sexist, racist, homophobic, ableist, in another language or spam, feel free to delete it. If you're not sure and you wanna let another moderator handle it, that's fine as well. Let's keep it positive, let's keep it clean. But we don't always have to agree. That's what good discussion is all about. So moderators, thank you. I want to thank my sponsors, Perform and Transform, Personal Training and Weight Loss. Sign up now for a free seven-day trial. Use the link in my video descriptions. And Advanced City Experts Real Estate Group. Contact Jason Lim and his team for all of your real estate needs. To Gassy Jack Art, maker of this fine artwork. And to Monkey Nine Brewing, my eternal sponsor. And finally, to uh, legendary Lucas Gates, Justin Credible, and Andrew Chang. Hall of Fame members, Jens95, Sim Alexander, Chris Seifert, Adam Brewfield, Shannon Hollingworth, HSM Fangirl Gaming, Smooth Groove, and Carol Bovenlander. Thanks to all of you. We have our one-on-one -on -one Zoom chats this weekend. Looking forward to catching up with all of you after a month. And finally, no matter where you're watching from, whether you're in my beautiful neighborhood at Steveston and Richmond, in the city, lower mainland, province, country, continent, or around the world, thank you for being here. You know I do not take you for granted. You know I think we're building the best YouTube channel, the best Canucks channel here on YouTube. So um, like the video, like the fact that we are together, like the fact that we are going to hear from the legend himself, Dan Russell, like the fact that, uh, yeah, that it's been awesome NHL playoffs. Maybe we'll get to that as well. But most importantly, the fact that we are indeed here together tonight. And I know that you could be watching, doing anything else, but the fact that you are here tonight, I, I appreciate you and I don't take you for granted. So I'm going to set this up now. I don't want to, I want to get right into the, this interview, this chat with Dan. He is live. This is not a live to tape or tape to live. This is live to live right now. And Dan graciously has agreed to spend time with us and even answer your questions. So type up stuff in the, in the comments for sure. Type, type whatever you want. I might not get to it until I actually ask for your questions in about 30 or 40 minutes, but know that I appreciate you. And before we get going, like the video, Subscribe if you haven't subscribed and consider becoming a member. Okay, enough of all that. I want to bring Dan on right now. So I'm going to set that up as we do this. And you guys should see Dan on your screen. Dan, can you say hello to everyone? Well, good evening, Clay. How are you? I am great. How are you? I'm doing fine, thanks. Thanks for having me on your uh, your channel. You have a lot of housekeeping to do at the top, don't you? A lot of subscribes I know you and likes and... Yeah, I know. In my in my daily vlogs, Dan, I put it to the very end of the video because otherwise no one will even get through the first minute. But uh, for the for the live streams, I'd like to do it right up top. But um, I really appreciate you being here. And this, um, yeah, I, I'll say even before we get to any of the questions and, and my fandom of you and your show and how you've been such a pioneer in, in the sports talk genre, um, our connection actually for this particular, you be more connected to my brother, Jason, than you have been to me. How do you know the Emo family? Well, I know his son is a great chess player, and I yes. tried, uh, Joshua. Um, so my son uh, played basketball in Langley, and your brother was his coach. And I remember walking in the gym the first day that uh, because they, they just randomly get players. I, I don't know if there was a draft of any sort. <laughs> and uh, your, your brother looked at the last name, and then he kind of saw that I was walking my son in the door and he kind of looked at me and, and it kind of went from there. And so he was, uh, he was kind of surprised that a, I was in Langley and B uh, that my son ended up on his team as he listened to my show very regularly. Yes, we both did. And I'm certainly going to get to that, I guess. Uh, and you're my brother, Jason said that your son's a ringer. Uh, my son is a, he was a, he's a very good basketball player. Um, and he, he was a good athlete. He had the athleticism that I never possessed. I mean, nothing. I mean, complete polar opposites. Uh, as a minor hockey player, he was a perennial 50-goal scorer. He saw the ice and so well. Basketball, Jason, your brother Jason can speak to that. 
And even baseball, he was a, a real efficient shortstop. So, you know, multi-sport guy, uh, plays golf, skateboards, you know, just all those things, which I actually really believe in. I think that, um, you know, today's hockey players, especially specialize too much on hockey and they don't play enough uh, sports. I remember having one of the Sutters, I want to say it was Brent Sutter uh, on the show once. And he said, we don't draft, uh, we, we don't draft athletes anymore we just draft hockey players and i want to draft athletes because it's so valuable to play other sports that's a, oh that's such a good point dan I, I know we have a lot of things in common including um some of our kids being the, at least two of our kids being the same age and yeah you know we, we don't have to give parenting advice here but it, there there's a certain wisdom certainly for exposing or involving your kids enrolling your kids in a lot of different things at the start and not trying to pigeonhole them right from the very beginning and let them choose and and yes. let them you know I might be a hockey guy, but my son might really like basketball or he might like uh, skateboarding or he might like golf. I mean, uh, that I think is Canadiana. I mean, we, we have to admit that in Canada, we, we love our hockey. And if you have a, a, a hockey playing son or daughter, that's pretty good at it, but is a double sport. Maybe they play volleyball or something else. And if, if they love that more, you know, as a parent, I think we just have to say, good, just do it. Just play the one you want to play, but play them all at, at a young age and then eventually choose the one that you like the most. Love it. Love it. And actually, uh, I don't think I've told you this, um, but uh, my, my viewers know that speaking of amateur sports, I'll be going traveling to Sweden next month with my son, Jacob, my second son, who made Team Canada for the World Bowling Championships. <laughs> yes. Yes. I hear you bowl as well, but not quite as well. Not well. I'll be happy if I outbow my weight. That doesn't happen all the time. So, Dan, well, that's that's great for your son. That's good. You're gonna go with him. Yeah, I am. I am. We're, yeah, we're gonna spend my uh, Father's Day and my birthday in late June out in Sweden. So we're very excited. Are you that. going to go to the home of the Sedin twins and Marcus well, and Borsberg? I did see the schedule, Dan, and I just so happens there's a couple off days. You know, Jacob isn't bowling. I think he's got to go on and cheer the females of his team, but. No one says that the dad of the male has to go. So I'm, I'm, I might do a little bit of exploring for sure. Good for you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, speaking of family, I will say, and uh, you know, I won't uh, go down nostalgia, you know, walk down memory lane too much, but I will say this. One of the most fond memories of my brother, Jason, who's two years younger than I am, myself and my father, Larry, my late father, Larry, was watching a game or not even watching a game and then running up to his room, turning on his little uh, AM radio and finding wherever you were and hearing the the dun 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 dun, dun, dun uh, you know I'm a mus I'm not a good singer but I'm a musician as you know, and that is honestly one of our most uh, fond and riveting memories from from growing up. Not just watching the Canucks, but hearing you talk about it. So first and foremost, on behalf of everyone here, Dan, thank you for being here tonight, and thank you for writing this amazing book, which we are going to get to in a few minutes. I want to say this: wow. Are you surprised? at all the attention, the good attention that you've been getting over the past month? Well, it hasn't even been a month. It's only been two weeks. Uh, we put uh, we put the announcement out. On, I teased it on Twitter for two or three days. I mean, it was just, yeah. you know, just a tease that I had an announcement. And then what happened was I started getting quite a few responses to the tease. And uh, at one of the announcements, I said, uh, you know, no guessing. And then I said, oh, what the heck, go ahead and guess. And then... <laughs> A lot of people started guessing that I was coming back on the radio. So now I'm faced with the actual Twitter announcement of the book. And I'm sitting here behind the screen and I'm actually a little nervous about sending it because, first of all, it's been a lot of work to get to this stage. And now I'm finally going to reveal the secret. A secret, by the way, that only three or four people knew. I mean, most people did not know I was writing a book. I mean, it was just not. I kept it so quiet. But I also was just about to hit send, and I said to myself, but a lot of people want me to come back on the radio. They, they're not expecting the book. So anyway, I hit the send, and, you know, within minutes, my Twitter feed was exploding. And uh, the reactions were like, wow. I, I should back it up to months earlier. There was a couple things happened on Twitter, and I said, uh, yeah, I always used to make a joke on the air that somebody got – too deep into something. I said, oh, don't worry about it. I'll write about it in my book one day. And I thought, you know, that's kind of tongue in cheek. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. But, but it was kind of a way to move on. You can read it in my book someday. So anyway, that we had a little bit of fun with that a few months earlier. 
But essentially, uh, the book was kept top secret by just a, a small handful of people. And I was actually really surprised that nobody knew. But hmm. when I put that out, it was like, and then I, the, the good thing about that, because I've seen people say, oh, I'm writing a book, I'm writing a book. Yeah. And you can read it next year or you can read it in six months. Or you could, No, no, ours was going to be ready the following week. So that to me was very important. That you, If you're going to tell somebody that something's happening, make sure that they, they don't have to wait for it too long. Right. Uh, at this moment, they still have to wait for the hardcover. That's the thing I'm learning. But, but the paperback has been out for about mm, 10 days, I want to say. Yep. And the response has been r- really incredible. I mean, it's, a, it's a number one seller in different categories on Amazon. The last time I looked, and it changes every hour. There you go. Um, it changes every hour. But in all of Canada, in all the books, it was number 35 of all books in Canada on Amazon. So it's really, you know, it's a whole new thing for me. I have never obviously been here. But what I had done, and I've said this a couple of times, is that I interviewed more authors than any broadcaster in Canada. I had them 15, 20 a year. You can do the math over 30 years, how many authors that is. And I didn't know how hard it was for them to get that book from concept to manuscript to an actual thing that's in your hand right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for you, I I love what you said about not teasing it for a full year or six months. No, my book's coming out next week, which is pretty cool. But how long truly was this in your mind for? And and not necessarily how long did it take start to finish, but when did you get serious and say, you know what? I have enough stories. I've interviewed enough people. I have enough experiences and I have something to share. I'm going to do this. Well, people have seen me in the last week. They know I'm sounding like a broken record, but I kept a lot of notes, okay? I kept a lot of notes. A diary for every show, uh, journals for my all my meetings and all my comings and goings, any trip I had, all highlighted in yellow and everywhere I went. I mean, I could just quickly take stuff. But the answer to your question, it was a kind of a two-phase thing. I started back in when I was doing the show, one of my summer breaks, I took a computer on a vacation and I just said, well, you know, if I don't put this down, my kids will never know what I did or, and then maybe they won't care anyway, but they'll never know. And so I thought I I have to at least try to put something. And then I shelved it, finished the show, retired from the show, didn't think about it much. Uh, But then COVID hit and I thought, well, everybody needs a COVID project. And this one is staring me right in the face. And so for almost two years, Um, I didn't write the manuscript for two years, but for everything that's involved in publishing a book, it takes a long time. I'd say a good year and a half. And, uh, and so I just got at it. It was great. I mean, I had something to do every day for hours and hours and I painstakingly went through every word. I had a friend in uh, Kamloops named Greg Drinnen from, uh, I, I met him on my Western Hockey League travels and he was a, a former sports editor. He's done a lot of editing and plus he was a fan of the show and he was a fan of uh, sports. And, and so one chapter at a time, I would send it to him and he would, you know, he came back to me and gave me some really nice feedback. He said, I'm really on the right track and so on and so forth. And he helped me an awful lot. Um, just as much motivating me as, as any corrections he made. And he, he, you know, he, he helped with that a lot too. So, um, so that was him. Um, And, and it was essentially just he and I for a a year knowing about the book and then it went from there. Wonderful. Well, I can, I can say now I've interviewed a a bestseller too. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. (laughs) (laughs) The um, sounds weird to me, but yes. Yeah. Take it. What's, and you mentioned actually that, okay, well, I'll say this. You were teasing me before before we press record that uh, I've had it for 40 hours and I haven't finished it yet. But yes, I, I've, I'm kind of, I, like I told you, I, I kind of read it like I read the Bible. I don't start from the start and go to the end. I've kind of been jumping around. I love the, the stories about John McKeechee and others. But um, what's your favorite chapter or what's your favorite story? And you can tell a bit of it now or you can tease it, but I know there's so many good ones in there, a good three dozen stories. What's your favorite story in the entire book, Dan? Well, I don't know if I have a favorite, but I have one that impacted me a lot. And so I guess I'll use that. And it was, um, it's in the chapter called seven hours after game sevens in plural. So we're talking about 94 and 2011, but essentially the 94. Now remember the book, 
the Canucks have gone to three finals, 82, the first one. And when 82 was occurring, I was just into the media. I would started at CJOR, had not started a talk show yet. Uh, and so I'm watching these games from Chicago in round three, where uh, in game one, Jim Neal scores in double OT. And that was exciting as anything. And because the Canucks had never been past round one uh, by that point. And then two days later, Roger Nielsen is waving the white towel that we still see in every hockey arena, every playoff game and, and such. So I, uh, after both those games, I hopped in my car. I don't know why. It was at 8 o'clock at night, still light out like this time of year. And, and, uh, and I started pushing the buttons on my car radio saying, what's, what's going on here? How come I'm so excited and nobody else is, you know, there's Jack Cullen on CKNW playing, you know, Jack Benny from – way back when, and there's uh, CJOR and Pat Burns hotlines on, but he's not talking about the Canucks and, and uh, C-Fun and LG are playing the hits. And I'm thinking, well, but, 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 but who's talking about the game I'm so excited about. And I said to myself at that stage, can I be the only one that, that wants more? Anyway, that's a long way of saying two years later, sports talk occurred. And then uh, after that, so we're talking a decade later, the Canucks are in the Stanley cup final. And home and away during that entire run, Sports Talk was there. And on game nights and off nights, it really was the dessert after the games. I mean, it was the gathering spot for, for fans around British Columbia. Yeah. And I could sense that. And it grew and grew. And, and the show did, too. We, we often went well past midnight. You know, we'd go to one or two in the morning, then three in the morning. And finally, by game seven, we were going seven hours. And so on the last game, you know, on, of course, deep down, I, yeah, I write in the book, you know, here in the afternoon, I'm walking around the streets of Manhattan and I'm thinking about my childhood and I'm thinking about how I, you know, I was the perfect age when the Canucks came into the National Hockey League. I was 10 years old. So I have the entire history of the franchise in, inside of me. And yes, I started as a fan. And so here I am, but now I'm not a fan, but I'm walking the streets of Manhattan in game seven. And I'm thinking, wow, here I am in New York and the Vancouver Canucks who I have followed since day one are playing one game in a few hours for a chance to win the Stanley cup. And, and it was, it was overwhelming. I ran into Sandra Quinn on the street that day and she was feeling the same and others too. I saw the Canuck mobile, they were honking their horn and, and all that stuff in the streets of Manhattan. But anyway, so then I go and obviously to the game and I write a lot about that and how, uh, how I, I, right till the very end, I thought they were going to tie the game. I just, I just felt they were going to tie it and I felt they were going to go on to win it. Uh, they obviously didn't. Then you snap out of that little mode and you get back into your professional mode. And I'm in the dressing room and I, I still see Trevor Linden with two bruises under his eyes. And he's just in the corner and his sweat is pouring off. He's got... I don't know if it's bruises in the eyes or tears in the eyes. Look at that. Yeah, that was yeah. the game before. Yeah. Um, and so he is in the corner and others there and it's heartbreaking. Like it's literally heartbreaking to see this. I get out of there. You know, remember that our show is going to start at 10 and uh, now uh, that is going to be what? 1 AM New York time. So I get out of the dressing room and all my interviews get to the elevator, ride the elevator down with Marv Albert, who's thrilled because he's been the New York Rangers announcer among the, uh, all the other things he's done for years and years. I get into a cab. We go to Westwood One, which is kitty corner from the David Letterman studio. We've been doing our show there. Anyway, you're really focused in and I'm writing my editorial and, and my thoughts. And, and in my earphones, I'm, I'm hearing about unrest in the streets of Vancouver. And I'm hearing about the riot and I can't see anything. This is not like you and I, I can't see a thing. I'm just hearing it. Good old radio. And now I get on the air and the first three hours of that show, I am essentially anchoring riot coverage that I'm not seeing. And I've got people on the streets, including Brooke Ward and Steve Snellgrove, Snellgrove taking tear gas on behalf of the team. Um, Janet, Brown was on the street. A lot of the CKNW people, uh, we were on CFMI, but sister station, so we were tapping into there. So for three hours, that's all I was doing. So now, you know, so we're at 
like what four in the morning yep and now now i finally get to canucks coverage and interviews like the one with trevor who was in that corner that's running at my time four or five in the morning anyway then open phones and the last caller of the day he says he's been trying since 10 o'clock to get in it, and he finally got in he got in at the same time the vancouver canucks plane had already landed right near where you're sitting at YVR. <laughs> so that's how long we were on. And then I get up. It, it's a dark studio. It's really dark. I get out onto the street at 8 in the morning. And we would have went longer, but the satellite connection, they said you had to pay a lot more money. And so we had to sign off at 5 a.m. Um, and anyway, that was a long story. We get out in the street. It's bright, bright. I, it's a warm June afternoon or morning. And you can hear those. Uh, new, newspaper hawkers yelling extra extra read all about it rangers win the cup rangers win the cup and it was at that moment i transformed back to 15 hours earlier where i'm now the guy who followed the canucks and i'm saying rangers won the cup that means the canucks did not win the cup it sounds weird yeah. but that's in my mindset i had to transition back Quickly, we got to the hotel to grab our stuff. We didn't even sleep there. We just stayed, there, uh, grabbed our luggage, went out to LaGuardia, grabbed the flight, connected in Toronto. And on an Air Canada flight, as you know, they sometimes show newsreels in the morning. So this was the first time I'd seen riot coverage. Here I was anchoring the riot, and now I'm seeing what the riot looks like. And I go, whoa, this is worse than I thought. And I was talking about it for hours. Anyway, I, that settles down. And I get to the back of the plane. I'm very tired, but for some reason I cannot sleep. And I was overwhelmed at that moment. Um, and I've never really had that feeling before or since, but it was a, a feeling of tremendous satisfaction that we had taken something that wasn't there in 1982 and we built it up. We built up a following. We built up a provincial following and we gave the hockey fans, the sports fans, the citizens of British Columbia, something more that they didn't have before. And as a radio junkie, it was like, okay, I did something that I, as a radio broadcaster, was, you know, sort of trained to do, build an audience, connect with an audience, and let radio serve its purpose. Radio and my show served a purpose and because it was essentially built by just me and and helped greatly by one producer that was it we we did all that and i think that sense of gratification and i don't even know if i described it that well in the book but all of what i just have talked about in this very long answer so forgive me for that but that is probably the most rewarding moment i had at least whether it's the most in the book or not, it's the most rewarding moment I had in the history of the show. What a beautiful answer. No, that was awesome, Dan. And uh, the, the way you explained everything, just the emotion, having to convey be eyes and ears when you're not even seeing it with your own eyes, uh, the riot coverage, you know, it, it, what's crazy is I, in some of my church talks, I talk about the 2011 riots, how I was at the game, then, then learning about the riots and, I talk about in, in when it comes to with young people how to make good decisions and, and decisions that basically can alter your life. I actually talk about the very same thing that for three hours I was riveted by in this 2011 riveted by the, the riots and, and not one single word or one single tweet about the actual hockey game. So what, what you said kind of kind of harkened back to that for me, by the way, because of my cheap Zoom account, if it boots you out, you, you might have seen the, the notice. If it boots you out, just use the same link and come back in. Okay. And we'll, we'll figure it out if that's okay. Really? I have to be a second time caller. <laughs> love it. No, I love the Dan Russellisms. In fact, there are people in the chat that say they love hearing your voice. It's the same voice that they remember from 10, 20, 30 years ago. Okay. I got one more for you. And of course I'm not going to say, do the opposite and say, what's the worst chapter your least favorite? Cause of course you don't have one, but what was the toughest part about this project about writing this book? Dan, what was the toughest part? Um, you're asking the toughest part of the process or the toughest chapter. I don't yeah. quite get yeah, where I'm you sorry, want me the to go. The part of the, the entire process of bringing this book to life. Well, you know, the thing is, uh, the book publishing industry is, uh, 
is hurting a lot, uh, like AM radio, like radio mainstream, like newspapers. You know, everything has changed over to, you know, how we consume media is way different. And the book publishing industry, you know, and you're the first one who's asked me this, and I, you didn't quite ask me, but I'm going to say it anyway. Oh, I love it. Um, I, went, I went to nine publishers, traditional publishers, and all nine said no. All nine of them said, no, I don't think so. I, I'm not sure that your show is relevant anymore, was one of the answers. Wow. And yeah, so that motivated me a lot um, because I knew differently. Um, and I also know the, the kind of people that used to listen to our show. They're still out there. Uh, they grew up with our show. Our show made impact that no other show of its kind ever made because we were the first, you know, I mean, and there were other reasons for that too. But um, so I thought, okay, this is going to be very much like doing the show. How so? Well, uh, and you'll read this through the book when you finally stop doing it like the Bible and start at chapter one and weave your way through. Um, there was a lot of politics that I had to fight through. That's why, you know, the subtitle is what it is. And a lot of stick handling. Um, but essentially, that show, Sports Talk, was me and one producer and very, very little management support. In fact, I could even make the case and do in the book. Not only was there not a lot of support, I was fighting through checks in my own building. So that was very difficult. So now fast forward all these years later and somebody says, no, we're not going to we're not going to support your book. And I say, OK, you don't have to. I'll, I'll do it myself. <laughs> and that that's what essentially we did. So that became, you know, self-publishing is very big these days. And I actually really like that because I am a I am a control freak. So mm -hmm. I want to c control everything. I want to be in on everything. And the good news is when you self-publish, you can control everything. The bad news is when you self-publish, you have to control everything. Yeah. And so everything is, is myself. And I had a little circle around me to help me as well, uh, including my sister, one of your neighbors there in Seaston. Uh, she helped me a lot. And uh, especially with pictures and interior design and website design and so on and so forth. Because we have a great website. Well, I shouldn't say great. It's a website, which I think is very good. DanRussellSportsTalk.com. And where you'll like it is that you can go to Memoir Moments and you can, you know, you're talking about that theme music. Doom, 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 doom. Well, there's a whole memoir moment as to how oh, yeah, that theme. I've watched it like three times. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. Okay. And then there's a whole turn back the tape uh, element where I put old interviews and stuff. And I'm going to put more of them on there. I just wanted something to start us off. But I'll, I'll, I'll keep feeding that beast. Yeah. But anyway, uh, I, I just, you know, it became a blessing to be self-published. Because every, I just know myself. I, I didn't want to battle with people about what should go in, what should not go in uh, or how this should be done or what the title of the book should be or, or whatever the case would be. Um, so that, that was a blessing, but yeah, it, it was a lot of work. It was, it was more work than probably anything I've ever done. Yeah. What a great answer. And, and truth be told, uh, I told a small fib. I probably shouldn't relate this to the Bible story, but I did read the first chapter. So I did read the part about the politics and your, your very first show being stared across the, you know, the, the, the but you there. only read the first chapter because the chapter name is Jesus saves <laughs> and Esposito scores on the rebound. That's yes, why you read um, that one. You it is Jesus saves. And there's a few chapters that I can't uh, repeat uh, the title on, on, on live right now. So it's, it's, <laughs> you can at your church, go ahead, give that a shot. <laughs> I'll be looking for a new church. No, that is awesome. And yes, everyone, uh, I'll, I'll share the link at the end of the stream, Dan Russell sports talk.com. You see he, Dan's posted some of the media availability he, that, that he's done. And the memoir section is so cool because you can hear the sports talk theme song. You can hear stories about the pauser about I, the one I watched today was how you do the road trip of a lifetime. Such, such cool, cool stories on there. Dan, one more, one more question about the book or the, the show. And then I'll get your, your take on a couple of things. Modern day. Um, can you share the story? You know, I'm a music guy. I love music. Uh, and I've watched the memoir a couple of times, but I think it's such a cool story. Uh, the iconic theme song that you and I both try to pump out a couple bars of, 
How did that come to be? How did you choose that song? And who is playing in that sports talk orchestra? All right. So the show was given to me in October of 1984, and we had like two days. I mean, that that constituted long range planning and radio two days to get ready. And uh, I I remember the day after I came with a list of names to the manager who was telling me that I was going to be hosting the show. And I I had five names I thought was pretty clever. He said no to all of them. It's going to be called Sports Talk. I said, well, okay, sports talk. He says, because it says it all. So I went into the production. A a lot of shows had, in those days, maybe still do, have their own kind of theme music that brings them into the show. Um, I knew I wanted one. I wanted uh, something that would be, you know, played at the beginning. Little did I know that we played that many times. Went into the production studio or production manager at CJOR was RJ McNichol. And the station, like a lot of those stations, they subscribed to a, a, a music service, a, a commercial bed music, like 30 seconds and 60 second music beds that were done by who knows who. Um, ours oh, Dan, subscription we're going to do what we call, as you know, a cliffhanger only because of my cheap Zoom account. I'm going to end this. Can you click back on the link I sent you and we'll just pick up where we left off? Is that cool? All right, no problem. Okay, thanks, Dan. We'll keep everyone in suspense for a second. Thank you. Recording stopped. All right, we are going to wait for Dan to jump back into the Zoom. Let's see if I can do this again. That's what happens when I forgot. I don't know what Zoom account I'm on, or maybe I never go for longer than 40 minutes on one of these things. So I'm going to start this up again, and then we're going to make it work. Recording in progress. Can continue his uh, can continue his story. So we'll just wait for him. As soon as he's back in. Recording we'll stopped. So thanks, everyone. Hang on to your uh, your questions. The name of the book, Carol, is called Pleasant Good Evening, a memoir. And um, yeah, you can pick it up on Amazon like I did, and it came a couple of days later. Okay, Dan is reconnecting. Awesome. Dan, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Turn down yep. your radio, please. <laughs> and you're back on, and we got another 40 minutes if we use all that. So please continue the story. Thank you. Well... So we subscribed to this music service. I didn't know where it was, but I learned later it was from Dallas, Texas. And in those days, every month or two, that service would send a stack of vinyl records to the radio station. And they, you know, what those used to look like. Do you still have a vinyl player or do you have a record player? Do you do yeah, that do or it, you're a music guy? Yeah, we still right. got one. So you know, what, you know what an LP looks like? Yes. Right? Okay. So we put on about five or six of those. And what the station would do is as soon as they used one, they would write on the LP cover what they used it for. So they, that was their filing system. So um, we put on about four or five and nothing struck us. And then the one that did come out, we, we, we looked at each other and said, wow, this is pretty cool. And at first, you know, you're just kind of getting used to it. And then we played it four or five more times to ourselves. Said, okay, that's it, move on. And that was the, the theme and that show uh, or that song started at the beginning of every show for 30 years and in the middle and at the end. And if you calculate it, it's about 25,000 times. So whoever wrote that song, they, uh, they had no idea it was going to become iconic and played that many times on the airwaves. And was it uh, on the memoir where you also said that, that you then heard that song on like a plumbing commercial or something? Right. So that uh, that's what I said at the end of the memoir. I said that should have been the end of the story, but it wasn't. I'm doing a Western Hockey League game in Calgary one day, and I did a lot of those, driving in my rental car to the Saddle Dome, and I'm just punching radio stations, and they, the, the, a, a, a commercial comes on for a plumbing company. And, and using the same music in the background, I go, wow, this plumbing company and sports side just doesn't fit. But that's how, that's how the story ends. That oh, it, it's awesome, and it's uh the fact that you use one theme song for the entire thirty year run is that correct? That's that's pretty yeah. cool. That yes, is pretty yeah, cool. it was. It was and the, you know, I I never knew anything about branding at that moment in my life, but that show or that song certainly branded our show. It still does. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and learn on the piano right after we we hang up here. No, that, that's pretty cool. All right, good luck. I, <laughs> I got a couple more for you, Dan, and then we'll turn it over to the people if that's cool. Um, 
Is there anyone that you listen to now um, on the radio, whether it's it's local uh, off of Sportsnet 650 or, or other shows? Is there anyone that you listen to now? Not a lot regularly. I do listen to Taylor and Dolly Wall. Um, yep. I actually catch them more on YouTube than, than anything else. Um, you know, the funny thing, when when I finished I you know doing the show, you had no idea, I didn't, how much I had to keep up and how much media I had to consume. And in the early days, I newspapers were, I would have five newspapers a day. My hands would be black with the ink mm. that would rub off. And, and I would be reading every section, not just the sports pages, but every section of all those papers, whether the Vancouver, the Globe, the Seattle, the USA Today, whatever we could get our hands on. Uh, and then over the time, of course, the internet and you would start consuming and then PVRing or VCRing back in the day, um, shows, sports shows, sports page, um, all of it. And so when it was all over, one thing I didn't really realize is that I'd been carrying that piano on my back where I just felt so obligated to keep up. And now I don't feel that obligation. Although I will say that and, you know, years have gone by. So maybe, you know, the, there might be some project that I'll, I'll do now that this book is is uh, completed that it might uh, kind of whet my appetite for something more. What that is, I, I don't know yet. But, you know, it's, it's kind of fun to still sort of be involved. I just don't want to be as involved as I once was. Right, right. Well, that makes a lot of sense. So here's, here's my last one. Then we'll do a couple of rapid fire. Then we'll turn it over to the people. What if someone's okay, I'll put it this way. Um, I, I don't think it's too much to say. I know you're a very humble guy, but you certainly you can, we can use the le word legacy, the legacy that you've left, uh, not only locally, but nationally putting your stamp, being the first, really the pioneer in the genre of sports talk radio. <clears throat> Honestly, when you look, when you look back, are you pretty proud? Are, are you more humbled? Are you humbled and proud? Are you surprised? What kind of emotions kind of stir up in you when you when you look back at your 30 year run and all the love, even though you're not asking for it, all the love and the respect that you're getting now, even to this day? Oh, thank you very much. Um, so I, I think I wrote somewhere in the book, I know I did, uh, that one of the things that happened is that the shows just kept happening one after the other after the other. And there was no time after a show to actually say, wow, that was really good, you know, to savor the show. It would be like midnight would come. I grab my papers, head into my office with my producer. We both look at each other and give a score. We always gave a score out of one through 10. Mm. Today was a seven. Today was a six. There was an eight. Uh, when we got into the nines during 1994, we were pretty <laughs> tough critics. But we set the bar at a certain level. But we never really looked back and said, wow, and wow, and wow. There was none of that. So it, it was actually, and then when I finished the show, I got busy with other things, didn't think a lot about it. It was only when starting this book that I went back and I, the first time I've listened to anything uh, and I have hundreds of hours of archive material, um, some of which ended up on the website, but I have hundreds of hours of material and I started, some days I'd sit back here and I'd, I'd put on, like I, I was looking for something for two minutes and next thing you know, I'm listening for 15 or 20 minutes and I'm going to myself, you know, that was better than I thought it was, or that was, that was solid. That was good. You're just too wrapped up in it. And so it's been this book that has allowed me to really, for the first time, appreciate what the show was, how it sounded, its legacy, its impact. All of that came in the last couple of years, more than it did while I was doing it. Well, beautifully said. Oh, well, thank. Uh, there's a lot of people in here that are, are waiting to ask you questions, but I'm going to end off with this really quick, what I call the five hole for obvious reasons, just rapid fire, first reaction, uh, quick answers. Well, you can go as long as you want, but uh, you ready for this, Dan? Are you cool with this? Are we playing Wordle now or no? <laughs> no, that's that's actually what, right when we're, we're done. <laughs> okay. okay. First question right. is, <laughs> um, what's... You, what's the best what's the sport you excel most at playing either now or back in your athletic <laughs> prime what's the best sport for dan russell table tennis oh sweet you want short answers that was it i was a richmond champion well i need some lessons um we have a 
ping pong table, table tennis table in our backyard, and my boys wipe the the literally wipe the table with me. So now all right, that's good. Okay, all right, good. I can do that for you. Number we've two, had step- epic games in my basement with my son, and I, being a note taker, believe it or not, and I told my son, when you beat me, you know you're going to beat me because I'm never going to let you win ever. Wow. And it took him five or six months, and he, he finally beat me. But I kept score of every game we played. This is the geek in me, uh, the note taker in me. So we played hundreds of games in the basement, and he finally beat me. Not all the time, but enough times because he could slam, and I could return and frustrate him. But anyway, that's a way longer answer. That's your answer, table tennis. Love it, love it. Number two, starting a franchise from scratch, Thatcher Demko, Quinn Hughes, or Elias Pettersson? <sighs> and they're all just breaking into the NHL. That's yep. where we're at. Yep. Well, I say I don't follow it quite as well as I used to, but I'm going to go with Quinn Hughes uh, because you know Demko's outstanding, but you can get outstanding goaltending. Uh, yeah. Pedersen is really, really uh, skillful, but I worry about him mm. um, and the rigors of the NHL. Hughes is not big, but what he does, no Canuck defenseman in 50-plus years has been able to do. Yeah. And so I would have to say Hughes. Awesome. Number three, growing up in Richmond or living here, you've experienced both. Do you prefer Chinese food or Japanese food? Dim sum. <laughs> Love it. Dim sum, you lose some. Number four, speaking of food, <laughs> if this guy is taking you out for dinner and paying, are you going out with Jim Rutherford, president of Hockey Ops? Are you going out with Patrick Alvin, our GM? Or are you going out with Bruce Boudreaux, our head coach? Well, of course, that's easy. Like, well, do you want to la- You want to have a few laughs at dinner or do you just want to... I mean, come on. It's got to be Boudreaux. I mean... I mean, that's uh, one dinner would be good. Uh, one season is good. Will next season be good? I don't know. But <laughs> at least he, he put some life back in the franchise. And uh, and who's paying, by the way? Was I paying or him? No, you don't have to pay. You don't have to pay. Okay. I don't think Boudreaux would pay either. But <laughs> we'll stick it to Aquilini then. Perfect. And finally, uh, and before we turn over to the people, uh, what's one thing that people don't know about Dan Russell? that you don't mind sharing today with, with 65 people watching right now. What's one thing people don't know about Dan Russell? I thought I just gave it the table tennis. I don't think people know that. <laughs> Give me another um, one. <laughs> you want another one? Yeah. I, I love driving. I, I, I really do. I, I, I love road trips. I love driving. I love getting in the car. I like seeing stuff. I could, I drove to Los Angeles once without stopping. Uh, of course, I did the Western Hockey League. I went all through Western. No, we'd fly to Calgary or Edmonton and, you know, catch that. But all the American trips, I, I just, I love it. There's something, you know, I used to do Seattle Thunderbirds for uh, for radio. And at the same time, and you'll read about it in the book, it was quite a juggling act. It's it's actually one of my my crowning achievements, trying to broadcast home and away every Seattle game while still doing sports talk. And wow. sometimes at the same time, I was on the air in two different countries at the same moment. It's all in the book. But um, I used to love going to Seattle uh, because of roaming charges. I would turn off the phone at the border. And that two, two and a half hours in the afternoon, it just was so therapeutic. Put the songs on. Just, yes, 70s. I put the songs on. And, you know, before you know it, we're in Everett. I got a little cloggy and then. I could see the Space Needle, and then we were at the Key Arena, and, and away we go. And, and I thought nothing of driving to Portland and back in the same day. All those Kelowna Kamloops trips, we went in and out the same day. We did overnight, yeah. mostly. We just came back. I love driving. Awesome. Great answers, Dan. So let's do this for the last 15 minutes. That's Oh, by the way, my brother Jason is in the chat. Jason says hello. Hi, Jason. Jay, if you heard that, Dan says hello back. So let's put some questions. Uh, if you have any questions for Dan, let's put it in the chat. He's graciously agreed to, to stay. <coughs> We're going to keep him for 15 more minutes and answer some of your questions. So if you have a question for Dan, type it in the chat, and I will, I will uh, pass it on to him. 
Um, oh, Jason Tosca says, please let Dan know the hard copy is now available on Amazon. Okay, I saw that. Um, Jason uh, has sent me some tweets and has been fabulous at cheering this book on. I mean, I, I, I can't thank him enough for that. But the I'm puzzled, and I told you I, I'm learning so much. Hardcover, I see it there, but I see a $44 price tag. That's not what we gave. So I thought that was like a third-party seller. Oh. Uh, I think the hardcover is about $36. And the soft, the paperback was twenty eight fifty, and huh. so it is there. But I'm kind of, now. I, I I need to talk to my project manager and find out, you know, what's really going on. The right. the one there's a huge learning curve about how pricing is all done and and how third parties can come in and charge more, yeah. and and you know I, I I can't even speak intelligently to it, so I won't. But that's what I thought I was seeing there. All right. So we think there's a hard copy. We just don't know if it's the legit. Well, it's legit. It's just whether or not it's third party. Okay. Great question here from Fangirl. Hi, Dan. Other than the 94 and 82 cup runs, what was your, has been your most memorable Canucks moment or memory? Um, the most memorable Canuck moment or memory. I, I have to say the first time Pavel Bure played a home game, played any game with the Canucks. They were hosting the Winnipeg Jets. This story has been told a lot of times. Um, And he didn't score in the first period. And he had a few chances around the net. And all this hype, I mean, all this build-up to Pavel. And then that that famous, famous shift in the second period where he got the puck inside his own line and he just exploded down to the other end and didn't score but nearly scored. The moment is a is as much about Bury as it is the buzz in the Pacific Coliseum. There was a a gasp, if you know what I mean. And and I've been to other buildings, all the original sixes or most of them, and you know you, you sometimes see that there. But when Pavel Bury went there, we we finally in the Coliseum, all of us were looking around, and saying, "Wow, this is our Bobby Orr. This is our." Guy Lafleur, this is our superstar. We've never had a superstar. We've had good players, never had a superstar. So I would say that that jumps out for me. Excellent answer. Thank you. My brother Jason says, pleasant good evening, Dan. Joshua is happy to give you a chess rematch anytime. And here's sure. my brother's question. What was the bigger disappointment, the Canucks in 94 or your loss in the Langley U13 basketball finals? Well, that's a really good question um, because as uh, – First of all, his son, Josh, incredible. He brings the chessboard on the postseason party. And I said, I told his dad all along, I want to try it. I want to try it. He's got little timers on there. you got to hit the timer. I never played with a timer before. But that was important because he had me waxed within about three minutes. I kept trying. And then I got to about 10 or 12 minutes once or twice. I might have went for a little walk between moves just to <laughs> stretch out the clock. Uh Thanks, Jason. That memory of that loss in that one game, that was all about coaching. You know, had we had the right strategies that day, uh, I I, I think, you know, there was just one guy on the other team. We kept putting him to the free throw line. He kept making them. And and there just wasn't seemingly the adjustments made by the coach. And I'm just not sure why. Um, So that was a heartbreak for sure. But uh, I still say 94. Okay. Very close, though. Coach Rob says, where did Scott Woodgate end up after Sports Talk ended? In Toronto. Um, and he's done lots of stuff, uh, from from what I can gather. Um, but uh, he, he uh, for a while, was on Sportsnet and also uh, CTV News. He really liked the journalism part, too. Nice. Nice. Edmund says, do you think Quinn Hughes will ever get a Norris nomination or win a Norris in his career? No idea. I mean, I really, I mean, how do you predict that? Uh, yeah. a, a nomination? Yeah, if, if he keeps tracking the way he does, stays healthy. I mean, there's a lot of ifs, ands, yeah. but hey, he's got tremendous uh, skill set. And I, you already asked me, which one would I keep? So obviously I, I like him a lot. Yep. Uh, Justin, uh, congrats, Dan, on the book. A similar question to what I asked you, but a bit different. What would you say was the toughest part of the entire process? So let's say it's not the publishing. Let's say it's something else. And how did you manage it? 
or the, actually, no, let's ask this. If you could do something differently, if you were to do it again, would there be anything? That's a good question. Well, I, I wasted time waiting for answers from traditional publishers. Mm -hmm. So I, if I could do it again, I would have just said, you know what? Sports talk was self-produced and this is going to be self-published period. Love That's it. Love it. LA women's hoop says, uh, do you know an LA sports talk host named Jim Healy? Jim Healy. A current one? Yeah. I don't know. Actually, I'm I don't not know if it's current or past. I'm not familiar. Sorry. Okay. No problem. Um, oh, talk about this board game. You, there's a cool. Dan Russell board game, right? Sweet. I play it all the time when I'm just waiting for interviews to start. You know, I just, I grab the game and, and I ask people like you questions. Okay. So you ready for one? I'm ready. Did you not, you never played this game? I have a friend that has it. I, I'm sorry. I have not played it yet. Okay. I'll just ask you one. If okay. you're worth your salt as a Canucks fan, then this should be no problem because it's a multiple choice question. And, and you know Google. the history of the franchise. All right. Well, of course you're not going to Google. You know, there's no cheating here. All right. Here's a random question. I just took it out of the box. Okay. Top one. There's three on every card. You go to Value Village, you might be able to find the game for who knows what price. Stan Makita, Wayne Gretzky, Joe Sackick, and one other scored their 500th career goal against the Vancouver Canucks. Okay, was it A, Jean Beliveau, B, Guy Lafleur, C, Frank Mahovlich? That's a good question, isn't it? And an I wrote all these questions. It's an excellent question. I'll go with Frank. You're worth your salt. You got it. Um, I Rensky, think it was Jean Nikita, Bellevo. Sackick, and the Big M all scored their 500th goals wow. against Vancouver. Those are milestone goals. Very cool. Thank you. No, and that. Uh, so, Simon, thanks for the question. He basically asked you, how did you decide to make the board game? Well, I didn't. Um, Gary Cowley was a listener of my show, a nice gentleman who I got to know, and he convinced me. He, we had, uh, I remember a number of Starbucks meetings uh, in Richmond, and him saying, nah, we could do it. He, he had a game called King's Cribbage, still mm. does. Other board games, too. But King's Cribbage was his real um, achievement and, and still does well, from what I gather. And he thought, oh, the Dan Russell hockey trivia game. And there's a memoir moment about that. Why don't you watch that? And you can find that out on uh, – there's right. a shameless plug. Dan Russell Sports Talk dot, dot com memoir moment hockey trivia game. No, no sense me wasting your time. I, I'll, I'll get there, I promise. <laughs> Nux fan number 29, hello, Robert. Favorite all-time Canucks player, Dan? Uh, too many, but uh, – favorite so you mean as a fan as a media person i mean my, my first favorite was bobby schmatz i love bobby schmatz uh back in the day i love rosaire paymont too uh from that era tony canty for some reason i really like stan smeal everybody did trevor linden naturally yeah. um that whole 94 group and i write about that in the book i mean compared to the 2011 group which i do contrast in the book uh, very, very likable, classy group. And I, I really like the 94 from basically top to bottom, from your Cortnals and Babbage's to Adams to Kirk McLean. And I, I mean, you go on and on and on. It was a wonderful team, but they were a wonderful set of human beings led by the most important person in the history of the franchise, Pat Quinn. Love it. And I can't believe we got 55 minutes in before mentioning Brian Burke's name. Stephen asks, what's your favorite Brian Burke moment? Well, the fact he came on was, uh, was amazing that he did. Um, and I, I said to people that, you know, as a talk show host, you look for certain qualities in a guest. Mm. You want, hopefully, you know, the list for me includes smart, outspoken, funny, quick, passionate, loyal. Brian Burke checked all those boxes. Every one of them. He, he, he just, he was, he was 
just an incredible guest. And he came at a time, you know, three years into our show where he took it to another level. I mean, we used to spar with each other and I used to tell him, you know, you, you might think you invented the show, but it was here long before you got it here. But um, he had a moment one day where he threatened to fight Doug Lidster, uh, one of his own players, and that made national headlines. So that was a moment. There was another time, though, where – and he never missed. And, and sometimes he'd have to be on the phone. One time he was driving. He was in Vancouver. He was driving back from a game. I guess it was a game on a Wednesday night at 11 o'clock, and he's driving back towards his home uh, in uh, uh, West Point Gray, I guess, or Dunbar, some, somewhere just towards UBC, Dunbar. And he's in kicks, and he's on the middle of an answer, and he stops midstream. He says, Dano, I got to stop. I said, what's going on? There's a fight. On the side of the street, I got to go break it up. Hangs up the phone, gets out of the car. I don't know what's going on. I'm just ragging the puck on the air and trying to figure out, you know, how long is he going to be? And uh, then trying to create some fictional play-by-play as to what might be going on. And he gets back on the phone. He's huffing and puffing. And I said, what happened? He said, oh, I had to break up these two yahoos. And I got blood all over my shirt. You know, Brian, he always wears white shirts. So he's got blood all over, and he just resumes the interview. That was Berkey. <laughs> that's an amazing story. Uh, I got a maybe that's a, that might be a memoir moment. I, I I think I should I should make that one. I think you should. In fact, you could just place it right off of this uh, right off of this Zoom chat. All a right. couple more questions, then a couple of reflections, then we will let you get going. Who's your Who's your uh, pick to win the Stanley Cup this year if you have one? Well, that was interesting tonight with uh, yeah. Colorado seemingly uh, – what an effort by St. Louis. I mean, that was yeah. really amazing. But uh, and, and what a goal by McKinnon late to seemingly win it and then not. Uh, but – so I would have said Colorado. I still kind of believe Colorado. However, McDavid's doing things, and you've probably talked about that nausea. I mean, he's just doing things that we've not seen before. And, yep. you know uh, – it unless somebody and nobody has a full answer, but unless somebody has a partial answer as to how to slow him and that line down, then who's to say they won't win it. Um, right now they've got the matchup against Calgary and it's working well for them. Uh, would it work as well against Colorado? I don't know. Still amazing run they're on because they had to win the last two in the LA series to still be up here playing. And now they're one win away from the final four. Yep. And of course, Tampa, they just keep doing it. Uh, how do you, how do you say, no, it's not going to be Tampa until somebody proves that they can beat Tampa? How many series in a row is Tampa won? Is it 10 now? It's 10, yep. That's a lot. That's like New York Islanders fame of the 80s. Yeah, that's you know? crazy. When, I saw the stat. They, Islanders were 19 in a row, which is pretty nuts. But 10, 10 in these days is pretty, pretty, pretty strong. Yeah, 10 okay, and what, still going. Yes, yes. One more question uh, from Jay Vander says, what's your thoughts on the modern NHL? Circus time, i.e., I guess overtime shootout. Most teams don't finish below 500 anymore. You know the the extra point. Do you, do you like the NHL in 2022? I don't like the standings. I never have. That's uh, yeah. I just I can't stand it. I can't stand that people are saying, "Oh, they're a hundred point team. They're a hundred point team." Well, okay. Well, everybody in the East was a hundred point team, so that's hundred points ain't what it used to be. That's the name of my song. Yeah. Um, I hate loser points. I hate four on four. I hate shootouts. Uh, I the sun came up every morning in the seventies and eighties when the Canucks would get a tie at Philadelphia or a tie game in Los Angeles. Uh, you know, you scored late in the third period to get a tie on the road. That was like a win. You didn't you didn't go to overtime. You didn't even think about overtime. Overtime was special. Overtime had to be saved for the Stanley Cup playoffs. Yeah. So they've uh, they've watered it down. And I don't like it. So how do you really feel? No, I'm just <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> and lastly, I'll end with these three wonderful comments. Um, Coach Rob, I will always remember the live broadcast you did in Victoria at the Harbor Towers. I still have the video I recorded of those shows. Thanks for the memories, Dan. So that's from Coach Rob. Thanks, Rob. Appreciate that. And I remember him videotaping those shows from Victoria. That's awesome. Uh, Michael says, Sports Talk was iconic. The Pauser, Ranger Smiths, and the Fax Man. 
You have these people, although I gave the pauser his name, but a lot of them self-assigned their own name in those days. It worked, though. It was fun. It was good. We had a, a list of characters that phoned the show. Oh, awesome. And Matt, Matt Blom says, My goodness, Dan Russell, when I called into Sports Talk at the age of 19 in 2004, I was so nervous and Dan could hear it, but was smooth and told me, Matt, you can call back anytime, okay? You're a class act. Wow. Thank you, Matt. Well, that's good. I mean, hey, it's hard to phone a talk show. It really was. I mean, yeah. I phoned a couple when I was a kid. I phoned Larry King's show once on the Mutual Broadcast Network. And I phoned, uh, I think, a Vancouver show. It's intimidating. First of all, the producer tells you to turn down your radio. Well, that's the thing, because it's a six-second delay. Yeah. And some some did not. Like, they just could not turn it all the way down. So now they start talking. And six seconds later, they're hearing their voice say, hello, Dan, hello. And they're already talking. Now they stop. And, you know, you, you just – so some people were nervous. And, you know, I like to think that I was like a – you know, pretty good at juggling that phone board, uh, like a orchestra conductor, trying to get the best out of as many callers as possible. But as I also say in the book, there are times where the callers brought out the best in me. So it was a good two-way street. Awesome. And uh, there's a wonderful way to end off on. Uh, Wayne says, Dan is still the best and the classiest sports guy in town. Too kind. Thank you very much. That's very nice. So, Dan, I, I've shifted the screen now where your website is actually on my screen as we speak dan russell sports talk.com why don't you plug the website and plug the book one more time before uh before we let you get going right so everything about the book that you're holding is on that website uh i also do a book blog so a lot of the questions you're asking and i don't think you've got there yet but uh i've been blogging since april even though the website didn't go live just to show people what we're going through to try to get this book out so dan's blog has something there also, upcoming interviews, interviews we've already done, the memoir moments, the turn back the tape. So it's all there at uh, danrusselsportstalk.com. The book is available on Amazon. Uh, it is a bestseller right now. We are so humbled and gratified by that. And uh, also, uh, we talked earlier about the hardcover. I'll look into that a little bit more because I, I really thought they were both coming out at the same time. I didn't know until, until the actual book was released that we had to wait for the hardcover it's there now at a price but i think it's uh, the suggested retail price is lower than that so I, I don't know if that changes but amazon is where you get the book and uh as i say i'm just blown away by people uh who are saying such kind things about it including and especially in the last hour yourself thank you play well thank you dan you're most deserving of of all the praise and affirmation i know you don't ask for it but you do deserve it you are uh, we don't. We use the word legend maybe a little too much, but I, I truly mean it. And I'm so grateful to you for your time, your energy, and taking the time to answer my and our, our viewers' questions. So um, I hope to see you, whether it's at a ping pong table, a basketball court, or somewhere in between. But thank you so much, and good luck with, with your continued interviews, your media tour. And yes, everyone, go pick it up. You'll get through it faster than me, but pleasant good evening, a memoir, my 30 wild and turbulent years of Sports Talk. Dan, thanks again, and I'll send you this link when I wrap up in about 15 minutes or so. All right. Thank you very much for your interest. Thank you for your questions. Uh, a real pleasure to be on with you. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. All right, friends, <coughs> that was Dan Russell. And uh, we will end off this, this chat now for uh, the next few minutes. A bunch of funny things were happening there. I, I think um, I accidentally recorded the first part, so my computer was trying to do that, and I, I think it was lagging for a little bit. Now, as you can tell, I'm on my old fisheye um, webcam because I can't do both. I, I can't use my ZV-1 for my Zoom and my, and my uh, live stream. So um, we'll keep going. We're gonna make it work. We're still going to play the games that we love to play in Gordle, Ordle, and Wordle. So just give me a second to set those up. And while I'm doing that, um, yeah, while I'm setting these up, you can just type in the chat. Type in the chat uh, anything that you want, your impressions of that interview. Would love to, to hear what you think. And as I, I'm just taking a couple seconds to set um, the next part 
up here. So once again, thank you for being here. Thank you for your patience. That's the first time I had to reload a Zoom call in the middle of an interview, <laughs> which is fine. Now I just realized that this light is probably too bright on here. I know Will said something about maybe my audio was too quiet, so I hope that resolved itself as we go. We went, and I'm setting them up. I'm setting up Gordle, I'm setting up Ordle, and I'm setting up Wordle. I'm not sure if Justin has put in his usual disclaimer. If you've played already, do not wreck it for anyone else. I still am trying to get to the bottom of the Thaddeus, uh, the Thaddeus episode from Sunday, but uh, we won't. Uh, we'll we won't get too hung up on it. Just want to read a couple of things. Top Shelf said thanks for your voice. Uh, thanks for your time, Dan. Michael says bring back late night sports talk. Haven't heard any. Okay, Clay, you're not bad. Yeah, maybe I thought about maybe I should bring back sports talk or something. Uh, Seek says, how are you doing tonight? Welcome back. Dan was an awesome interview. Great show tonight. Thank you. Awesome to hear Vancouver Sports Talk legend. Uh, that's awesome, Jeremiah. Thank you. And Justin, great interview. Dan was amazing. And if anyone has played today, please refrain. There we go. That's all you need to know. So we are going to start with my new favorite, which is Ordal. So if you haven't played Ordal, I mean, if you haven't played any of these yet, um, that's good. If you have played them, don't mess it up. But this is Ordal. Actually, hold on before I do that. And what we're going to do is. Okay, that's better. So who does that look like? Who does that look like? The first name I see in the chat, I will type it in. Who is that? Six says Brock Besser. So we're going with that. Okay. We got nothing right. <laughs> we got nothing right. So he's not a right winger. He's not in Vancouver. He's not in the West. He's not US. He's younger than 25. He's, he's not right-handed. So um, he's younger than 25. So I'm not going to say Erickson. AG says Owen Power. Actually, that could work because he's in the other side. So let's try that. Owen Power is not even in the database. Okay, so it can't be Owen Power. Um, we know it's someone from the Eastern Conference and someone who's younger than 25. No, Eastern Conference, Edmund. Makar's in the West. It's someone in the East. No, Brent Sopel's too old. I, I kind of want to guess like Sveshnikov or Aho. I'm going Sveshnikov. I, I'm, call, I'm, I'm calling it. Okay. So I got East and left winger. And he's not in the Metro. So we know he's in the Atlantic Division. Okay. So we're getting there. We know he's shorter than six foot one. He's smaller than 195. Oh, is this a... I think, is this Cole Caulfield? Jeremiah, this is Ordo. I'm going Cole Caulfield. What, his, he's not in here either? How do you spell his name? Well, there he is. Oh, sorry, I suck, you guys. Okay. <laughs> so we got Eastern Conference Atlantic Division. So we got the, but he's not, oh, I thought Caulfield was Canadian. I'm so stupid. Okay. So I'll take the next, and I, I've guessed three right-handers in a row. I'm so bad at this game. I will take the next Eastern Conference player from the Atlantic Division who's not from the U.S. or Russia, who is 23 or 24 years old. Well, I see some Nylanders. I see some William Nylanders. Oh, what am I doing? Too old. Uh-oh, we're running out. I see uh, Jack Hughes. No, that's it's got to be someone from the Atlantic Division. Atlantic Division. That's not Montreal or Toronto. I don't. I know. I think Braden Point's older than the guy. Can only be twenty three or twenty four years old. Jack Hughes, wrong division. Nylander, Tage Thompson. No, wrong, wrong. Uh, so Jeremiah, this game is called Ordal, and I need to find someone. Well, he's, he's got to be Canadian from an Atlantic Division team. Oh, no, he doesn't have to be Canadian. 
but younger, but he's older than 22, but younger than 25. So he's 23 or 24. No, it can't be Braden Point. He's too old. Who's? And he's small. He's under six feet tall. And he's, and I can't believe I've guessed four right wingers. I suck. All right, guys, give me a guess. Give me a guess. Atlantic Division. Tampa, Florida. Florida. Who's Florida under six feet tall, though? Isn't Lafreniere in the Metro as well? Atlantic Division is like Ed Montreal, Ottawa, Toronto, Buffalo, Boston, Florida. Tampa and someone. Yeah, this one is tough. Who does Verana even play for, Jeremiah? I don't even know. But I know he's not. No, it's not him. I'm cheating now. I'm looking at the pictures. <laughs> Connor Brown. No, he doesn't look like him either. No, I, I shouldn't cheat. I should just put the next one I see. Yes, Larry is in. Who's Larry? Who's Larry? When you said Larry is in the Metro. Detroit, Jake Gensel. Oh, Detroit was the team I missed. Thank you. Hagel. All right, let's go with Hagel. Yes, I think we're right. Very good. Sick, very good. We got it in five. Not bad. Not bad. If we played for 46 minutes, we play again. But very good. So we got it once in two times, once in five. So, okay, that was Ordo. Let's go to Gordo now. Very good, sick. Disregard my Jake answer. Good job. Okay, let's go to Gordo now. I'll take the first six letter last name no i saw one let's start with it hughes oh what a horrible guess i'm sorry i suck um so i will take the next name that has a, a u in the second spot a u in the second spot the first the next one i see the next guest I see that has a U in the second spot, I will take. And it, you're right, it can't be Sundin. Why can't it be Sundin? Oh, oh no, I saw Sandine first. Oh, what am I doing? Because <laughs> how do I type Sandin? If I put Sundin, actually, I would have got a I would have got a U here as well. So. We know it ends in an I N and we know there's a U there. Oh, you you know, I think uh I think Seek was right. Yeah, and I and I ignored it. And then Justin got it as well. Well, Sick is two for two. I'm impressed. So Jake Muzzin. Jake Muzzin. And for Gordo, we've been really good. Look at us. Look at us. Okay. Here's Wardle. I hope Thaddeus isn't here so he can't mess this up for all of us. Seek is on fire. All right, I'll take the first five-letter word I see here. Jaskin's not impressed. <laughs> all right, what's the first five-letter word in the chat that I see? And then we will wrap up. By the way, was my stream lagging a little bit in the middle? I think as soon as I started the second Zoom call, it started to lag a bit, didn't I think that was when it was trying to record. Um, it was trying to download the recording. Stupid. That was, that was dumb of me. Okay. Justin says sharp. Okay. I will take the next word that has an H in it, but not... Yeah, it was lagging. Echo Trump. But... Not in that first section. Actually, I don't know why I typed that in. I, I don't like that, Justin. I, I like you. I like a word that has more vowels in it, but we'll live. 
No, no more. Um, we're not playing uh, Canucks players anymore. Canadian A. <laughs> I need a word with an H in it, you guys. I need a word with an H in it. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. What, did, did everyone just quit? Oh, thanks, Jeremiah. Yeah, the sound, thank God, was good. That's more important, actually, but I knew I do know that the video was lagging a little bit. Yeah, thank you, Jeremiah. I appreciate that. Uh, cheap can't work because I need the H out of the... Honey would work, and it's got some vowels in it. I like that. Okay, not bad. So we got an O in the proper spot, and now we have an H somewhere else. So I'll take the next word. Fangirl, thank you for not guessing. Um, Hegel. <laughs> Who so? Okay, we're not... <laughs> you guys, no more hockey players. This isn't Gordo. This is normal English words. So I'll take the next word I see that has an H in it in one of the third, fourth, or fifth positions and an O in the second. Oh, I like that one. Excellent guess, Paul. Excellent guess. Okay, so now it's either pouch, louch. It's not, it could be couch, technically. So it's either going to be pouch or couch. Hmm, which one should I do? Or vouch, actually. Yeah, it could be vouch. And sick is three for three today. All right, we're going vouch, couch, and then pouch. Vouch. Wow. Sick is on fire. He's sick. He's three for three. So there we go. Look at our, our bit of our word, uh, strange wordle distribution, especially this one. I'm still not sure about this one, but needless to say, we got it in for today. Great job, you guys. Okay, we can this now. No, what am I doing here? Okay, this does feel like an old school stream with my, my fisheye camera and my messy desk over there. So thanks, everyone. That was a lot of fun tonight. I really appreciate you sticking around and the great questions for Dan. I Yeah, I'm going to go back and listen to it. I, I Dan is such a gift to listen to. Please, please, if you want, go buy his book. It is indeed called Pleasant Good Evening, a memoir. You can get it on Amazon. I have the paperback, obviously, but apparently the hardcover is ready at uh, right now and you can go to his website dan russell sports talk.com you see it on your screen right there hall of fame and legends i will be sending you an email uh posting on the community tab tomorrow you can book your your chat with me for this sunday or friday not this friday so it's either sunday may the 29th or friday june the third those are the two days that I'm offering for my next round of chats. And thanks to all of you for being here. Uh, no donations tonight, which is fine. That's not a hint. I'm just remarking that there are no donations tonight. We had a few new subs, which is great. And we had a lot of great comments in the chat. So thank you as well. Now, to wrap up, what we are going to do is um, this weekend, yeah, I'll be streaming on Sunday nights. And uh, if you want to check out my vlog from today, uh, there was some reports that Alex Chason was maybe hitting to the Swiss League and then his agent refuted that, but that was after I recorded my vlog. So if you want to learn a bit about more about Alex Chason maybe going to uh, play in Switzerland, you can watch my vlog from today. Otherwise, thank you for being here tonight. That was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed it very much. Oh, all, I, see, now, now it looks like I was just asking for donations. Paul, Thank you for the $6.99 donation. Appreciate you. Fangirl, thank you for the $3.99 donation. Appreciate you. And to anyone who's uh, donated on other times as well, thanks very much. Um, appreciate you. And you guys know that you can actually leave tips on my regular daily videos. Okay, now <laughs> Jeremiah comes in with $9.99 and he just bought the book. So Jeremiah just spent about like 40 bucks in the past five minutes. Jeremiah, thank you. Paul, thank you. 
fangirl, thank you. You guys are awesome. Uh, sick. I'm probably not going to watch the Canada game. I don't even know what time it is. Is it is it elimination round already? Let me know. And yes, um, yeah. Let me know. And yes, yeah, so much, so much love in the chat and so much uh, generosity. So thanks as always. Okay, I'll wrap up now. Unless you want to keep giving tips, then I then I won't uh, then I won't leave yet. Rosario, nice to see you. Uh, although we are finishing right now. So as always, uh, thank you for being here. Um, I appreciate you. Subscribe if you'd like to. Like this video if you'd like to. Leave a donation or a tip on any. Uh, Jasper and Pro uh, Seek, I probably won't get up at 6. Um, Del Zotto's okay. The Dono's coming in just so Clay stays on. Yeah, well, that, that's one way to keep me on for sure. But yes, uh, so subscribe, like, comment. Leave a tip, leave a donation, become a member, all those cool things. And no, I'm not streaming to midnight. I got a bit of work to do before a busy day at work tomorrow. And plus I'm on my goofy, my goofy camera. Although this would, if, you know, if we get, uh, no, 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 I better not. I better not. I better, I better cut it off here because I'm not going to do things just for money because that, that doesn't sound right. I was going to say if we get to X amount of money, then I will stay on to midnight, but, uh, but I think that'll be too long of a night. So let's cut it off here for sure. Okay, as always, stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves, and take care of each other. A weasel walks into a bar. Then the bartender says, wow, I've never served a weasel before. What can I get for you? Pop. Pop goes the weasel. God bless and go Knas go. Booyah!